What are you looking at? Out at the world. Where do you go from here? Kidderminster's about 20 minutes away. No, I mean, where do you go when you've dominated the whole world? The Cotswolds is really nice this time of year. What? I'm trying to have a crisis here, not book a holiday. I'm saying what's left to a man that's achieved all his goals. Got it. Disneyland. You know what? Forget it. Forget what? Welcome back to Keepy's Quest. This week we're looking at the Two of Wands, a card of success and achievement. There are many meanings to this card, so let's dive straight in. Earlier decks like the Sforza and Marseille have the usual simple image of two wands crossed with some interesting looking vegetation. The Thoth Tarot has a similar design but with a nod to Buddhism. Crowley says the pictorial representation is two doors crossed. The doge is the Tibetan symbol of the thunderbolt, the emblem of celestial power, but more in its destructive than its creative form. The Solar Busker Tarot is... different. I'm not sure what you'd call that, to be honest. I felt obliged to pixel out part of the card, although I'm not exactly sure why. Let's just say it's a bit odd. This brings us to the Wade Smith card. Wade says a tall man looks from a battlemented roof over sea and shore. He holds a globe in his right hand while a staff in his left rests on the battlement. Another is fixed in a ring. The rose and cross and lily should be noticed on the left side. So the globe in his hand would relate to the idea of accomplishment, holding the whole world in his hand. He's holding a wand and another is attached to the wall. This seems to show his ownership of them and the security he's got from his achievements. The rose and cross and lily weight mentions would most likely be a reference to the rose cross, the symbol of the Rosicrucian order. The what now? A brief history of Rosicrucianism. Rosicrucianism is a spiritual movement that originated in Europe during the 17th century. The basis for the order came from two anonymous manifestos that appeared in Germany between 1610 and 1615. Soon after, these were published as the fame of the Brotherhood of the Rosy Cross. The manifestos refer to the Kabbalah, Hermeticism and Christian mysticism. It was claimed that they were built on the esoteric truths of the ancient past, which provided insight into nature, the physical universe and the spiritual realm. Rosicrucianism was a major influence on the formation of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, who expanded the symbol of the Rose Cross to include the planets, zodiac, Hebrew alphabet, pentagram and hexagram. The Hermetic title for the Two of Wands is Lord of Dominion. So the title would refer to the aspect of success we see in the card. Now here we find a slight difference between the Thoth and the Rider Waite interpretations. The Thoth deck focuses on the aspects of strength, boldness, courage and fearlessness. The Rider Waite takes this a step further, in discussing what comes next. Waite says, between the alternate readings there is no marriage possible. Yeah, alright. On the one hand, riches, fortune, magnificence. On the other, physical suffering, disease, chagrin, sadness, mortification. So he seems to be referring to the idea that once we've accomplished everything that we aspire to in the material sense, we're left with an empty feeling because the journey is now over. In psychology, this is known as the arrival fallacy, where we become so accustomed to the act of striving for something that once we achieve it, we can become depressed as we've got nothing left to work toward. According to Waite, the design gives one suggestion. Here is a lord overlooking his dominion and alternately contemplating a globe. It looks like the malady, the mortification, the sadness of Alexander amidst the grandeur of the world's wealth. The aspect of sorrow for the Two of Wands originally came from 18th century French occultist Ete Hila. I still don't think I'm pronouncing that properly. However, the Golden Dawn wanted this to be a card of boldness and mastery. I'm speculating here, but I'm thinking that Pamela Coleman Smith, who is said to have designed all of the minor arcana cards, wanted to bring the meaning back to Ete Hila's vision. Waite and Smith both went with this and took inspiration from the tale of Alexander the Great and the legendary quote, When Alexander saw the breadth of his domain, he wept, for there were no more worlds to conquer. Do you know where that quote actually comes from? Somewhere back through the mists of time. Die Hard. Die Hard. The action movie. Yes, the action movie. The character of Hans Gruber says it, and it's actually a complete misquote from Plutarch and his treatise on Alexander's fortune and virtue. Yeah, that was what I meant. Plutarch's... thing. Cobblers. Anyway, this gives us two meanings for the card. The idea of material success and the idea of sorrow attributed to that success. According to Rachel Pollock, one's love of battle and challenge can leave one with no real satisfaction in actual accomplishments when the fight has been won. The Two of Wands corresponds to the Aries zodiac sign and to the planet Mars. So we've got Mars in Aries for this one. This is definitely the correspondence that informed the Golden Dawn interpretation and the success element of the card. 
Mars is the planet that rules Aries, and when we put the two of them together, we get a real synchronicity. According to Lon Marlowe Duquette, Mars is very happy in Aries, and Aries is happy to play host to Mars. Mars is the planet of action, so when we combine that with the fiery cardinal sign of Aries, we get strength, ferocity, energy, and drive. Kind of an unstoppable force, which is perfect for the suit of wands and for the idea of dominion. The Two of Wands resides in the world of Absolute and sits at the second Sephiroth of Hokma, at the top of the Pillar of Mercy. The name of this Sephiroth translates to Wisdom. So we've moved on beyond the potential depicted by the Ace, and now we're at the first point of manifestation. This means figuring out what it is that we actually want to do, and starting the process of making it a reality. We know that it's a wise move to plan ahead when we're beginning some new project, and that fits very well with the card's position on the Tree of Life. According to Crowley, this card pertaining to Hokmar in the Suit of Fire represents the will in its most exalted form. It is an ideal will, independent of any given object. The Two of Wands herb is Basil. This is the good luck herb. Basil can also prevent arguments as it promotes sympathy, peace and understanding. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Shut up. But what does it all mean? So as we talked about earlier, we've got two meanings for the Two of Wands, and the meaning that's relevant will depend entirely on the context. In its most obvious form, this is a card of beginning the work of achieving a major goal. If Dominion is our intended outcome, then the Two of Wands is telling us to get started, make plans and be about it. The other meaning for the card pertains to the idea of Alexander's sadness that we talked about earlier. This would be the feeling that Dominion has already been achieved, and now we're left feeling somewhat trapped by our own success. Wands are all about action and movement, so there is a definite conflict when they find themselves static or not striving towards something, and we can see that in Smith's illustration. Rachel Pollock says he's bored, his accomplishments have only served to wall him in, a situation very unpleasant to fire, and the wall he holds is a very small one. In a sense, we're talking about how we can give our lives meaning when we've got what we want. Obviously, there's a spiritual aspect to this. The road to transcendence can be a long one, and there's plenty to keep us busy. It certainly keeps me busy. But also, let's think about that one that's attached to the wall of the castle. We can see it as security that our success has given us, while the other wand in his hand can represent the prospect of starting something new. Another chance to achieve dominion and a fresh challenge to get excited about all over again. Not only does this bring us back to the other meaning of the card, but it also leads us very nicely onto the reverse reading. Did you like what I did there? What? Sorry, I was thinking about eggs. Eggs. Anyway, when the card appears upside down, it brings us to the idea of jumping straight into something new. Wade mentions surprise, wonder, enchantment, emotion, trouble, fear. This would be the thrill of venturing into something new and exciting. This is what ones live for, adventure, danger and action. Rachel Pollock says, when we leave behind safe situations and past success to enter the unknown, we liberate so much emotion and energy that we cannot avoid the wonder of enchantment or the fear that goes with it. The big takeaway for the Two of Cups is the idea of getting started in a new project and laying the foundations to achieve what we want out of life. If you feel like you've gone as far as you can in a situation, then this card could be telling you to start something new and begin the process of achieving all over again. It can also mean moving on from something that's not working for us anymore. We'll leave you with this quote from Rachel Pollock. The card speaks very strongly to people who have lived for a long time in some unpleasant or unsatisfactory situation and finally decide to make a change all at once. Thank you once again for tuning in to Kippy's Quest. May the coming days bring you success, accomplishment, and the newfound will to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.